Hello everyone, my name is Carl and today I'm going to be talking about the Lion hypothesis. So first a quick background, in 1949 a scientist by the name of Murray Barr discovers what he calls Barr bodies, which are these uh, colorations on the nucleus of a female cell. This is a somatic skin cell here. In 1961, Mary Lyon hypothesizes that it's one of the X chromosomes being inactivated in female cells. So the way this would work is that one X chromosome is going to be inactive in every non-sex cell, okay? And which one that is inactivated is going to be random, and all cells from a cell line are going to retain that inactivated chromosome. So every time that cell duplicates, it's going to retain which one is active, which one is inactive. So here's a picture I took of a zebrafish embryo. Let's call it a mammalian embryo. And let's say it's female. So it has one X from one parent, one X from another. And randomly, one is going to be active or inactive. So as those cells replicate down the line, they're all going to retain whichever one is active or inactive. And that leads to what we call a mosaic. So here's a tortoiseshell cat and has a mosaic for this coloration, this orange versus black coloration. We're going to talk more about these in a minute. This can also happen because of mutation. So this is a human, obviously. Um, she had a mutation very early in her developmental period where you see that there's a skin effect uh, with pigmentation. And you can see, actually visualize the proliferation of the cells and see the mosaic, which is what's happening in the cats. So tortoise show cats, two X chromosomes, all right? One from the male, one from the female parents. So if you have both of them, you're going to get a tortoise show cat. If you have two orange, you get orange, two black, you get a black. That's pretty simple. Males, no tortoise shell, ain't happening. You can only be orange or black because you only can get one allele from the mother and you're going to get a Y from the father. So if we do a cross here, all right, between a orange female and a black male, and then we throw in another trait, we'll say hair length, where long hair is dominant over short hair represented by these H's. So we cross this trait and we get half tortoiseshell cats, half orange males. That's all you can get because the father is going to give Y's to all the males and the mother's going to give oranges to the males and then they're going to get one of each for the females. So there's the only two colorations you can get. And within each of those colorations, you're going to get long hair or you're going to get short hair, which ends up with four possible phenotypes total. You're going to have long haired and short haired tortoiseshell females, long haired and short haired orange males. That's the only way you can do it because of the sex length of that coloration. Something else important to note is with mosaicism, you're going to have this uniqueness. You're never going to have the same coloration pattern between females because whichever chromosome is active or inactive is going to be a, a random process and it's never going to be the exact same cell stage when it happens. And the actual proliferation of the cells is never going to be exactly the same between each development of an individual. So it's always going to be different. It's going to be unique. And here's a few different tortoiseshell cats I pulled together and you can see neither, none of them look the same. They all have different colorations. And that's the way that it's always going to be. You're never going to get exactly the same coloration. So. Thank you, and that concludes my presentation on the line hypothesis.